सहनावतु सहनो भुनक्तु सह वीर करवाव तेजस्वीनावेतमस्त मा विद्वेश शांति 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 Sairam everyone. We will start with uh, the chanting. Uh, we will chant the uh, the four shlokas which we have already learned. I will recite it part by part, and you follow. Repeat after me, Sairam. अर्जुन उवाच अर्जुन उवाच एवं सतत युक्ताये एवं सतत युक्ताये भक्तास्वा पर्युपासते भक्तास्वा पर्युपासते ये चाप्यक्षरम्यक्त ये चाप्यक्षरम्यक्त योग योग श्री भगवाच श्री भगवाच मैयावेश्यमनो ये माम मैयावेश्यमनो ये माम नित्ययुक्ता उपासते नित युक्ता उपासते श्रद्धया परयोपेता श्रद्धया परयोपेता ते मे युक्त तमाहमता ते मे युक्त तमाता ये क्षरम निर्देश्य ये क्षरम निर्देश्य पर्युपासते अव्यक्त पर्युपासते सर्वत्र सर्वत्र 
ಗಮಚಿಂತ್ಯಂ ಕೂಟಸ್ಥಮಚಲ ಧ್ರುವ ಕೂಟಸ್ಥಮಚಲ ಧ್ರುವ ಸನ್ನಿಯಂದ್ರಿಯ ಗ್ರಾಮ ಸನ್ನಿಯಂದ್ರಿಯ ಗ್ರಾಮ ಸಮಬುದ್ಧಯ ಸಮಬುದ್ಧಯ ೂತೂತ Okay, Sairam everyone. We will continue from the fifth shloka onwards today. Today we will look at three shlokas. Uh, because the fifth shloka is separate, but the sixth and seventh shlokas have to be read together. So we will cover all three of them. The fifth and sixth and the seventh shlokas of the twelfth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita called Bhakti Yoga. So we will just read the verse. Klesho dhika taras te sham avyatta sakta chetasa. Klesho dhika taras te sham avyatta sakta chetasa. ಕ್ಲೇಶೋಧಿಕೇಷಾಮವ್ಯಕ್ತಸಕ್ತಚೇತಸಾಮ್ಯಕ್ತಿರ್ದುಃಖ ದೇಹವದ್ಭಿರವಾಪ್ಯತೆ ಅವ್ಯಕ್ತ ಹಿ ಗತಿರ್ದುಃಖ ದೇಹವದ್ಭಿರವಾಪ್ಯತೆ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಬಿಟ್ ಕಾಂಪ್ಲಿಕೇಟೆಡ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ವೇ ದ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸೌಂಡ್ಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಪ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ಡ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿಯರ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ and also you know as you can see it is a very long compound word all words fused together but when we read them separately word by word you will be able to uh, pronounce them properly and then we can put it all back together i will just highlight some of them i will highlight them when we split the words also clay show dhi this dhi is the fourth letter in the ta varga so it has to be aspirated it's a maha prana letter okay dhi karaste sha this sha is should be pronounced with your tip of the tongue pointing up towards the roof of the mouth sha ಸೋಟೆಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಸಮ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಾ ಖೇಹವ ಭೀ 
this there's a compound consonant here that's a b this uh, bha is the fourth letter in the pa varga so it has to be aspirated let us look at the word split of the verse the first word is kleshaha kleshaha the second word is adhika taraha adhika taraha because of sandhi the kleshaha becomes klesho and the a becomes silent so as you can see the silent a is denoted with this uh, letter which looks like an s actually in english s it's called avagraha that means there's the silent a what it does is actually it increases the length of the show klesho dhikataras okay so the show becomes longer with three matras okay but the a is silent kleshah adhikataras is klesho dhikarata The Atika Taraha and the Sham uh, join together and the Visarga, this Atika Taraha becomes Is. So it becomes Adhika Taras Te Sham. Okay, that's again because of the coming together joint. Sandhi. Atika Taras Te Sham. Um Te Sham and Avyakta. Um plus a becomes ma. Okay, so that's a simpler uh, transformation. Te sham avyakta. Avyakta plus a sakta. Okay, there are these two words. Ukta plus a becomes ukta. The ukta becomes longer. Ta. Avyakta sakta. Okay. So that's also because of sandhi. So, but the words when split there, avyakta, asakta, and chetasa. There is no transformation of any kind. Just it's just natural form. Kesha, kesha, adhikatara, teesham, avyakta, asakta, chetasa. When they put it together, it becomes klesho dhika taras tesha mavyakta sakta chetasa. We look at the next line, which avyakta. There is no change. Avyakta. He no change. Gati he and dukham. The gati he the visarga gati he becomes ir because of sandhi. So it's gati ir dukham. That's how you get gatir dukham. When the words are split, they are gatihi and dukham. The next two words are also joined together. They have a bhi and abapyate. Bhi that visarga becomes ir again, so that ir plus a becomes r. So you get they have a bhi abapyate. But when the words are split, they are they have a bhi and abapyate. So the second line is avyata hi gati hi dukham they have a bhi abapyate. Uh, now let's look at the word to word meaning. Kleshaha is the first word. Kleshaha is the first word. Kleshaha is something which inflicts pain. Kleshaha is something which can inflict pain. It can be troubling. It can be problematic. All that is klesha. Okay, it uh, uh, gives us a bad experience. Okay, kleshaha. Adhika taraha. Adhika taraha is the next word. Adhika, I think all Indian languages will say adhika means lot. Adhika means lot. There's a second suffix which is taraha. 
the word para is generally used when there's a comparative uh, comparison so it's a little more so adhika tara that means it is comparatively more pain inflicting okay klesha adhika tara means it's a little more troublesome okay that's what krishna is saying the next word is tesham tesham is from the uh, simple word is saha okay saha means he or it can or sa or so you can say. it it is not both so saha is the simple pr- uh, pronoun he referring to a third person tesham means the sixth form pl- in plural the plural sixth form of the word saha is tesham that means of those okay of those that something which belongs to many people okay they from of those the next word is avyakta we have already looked at the avyakta vyakta means to indi- individuation or manifestation avyakta means that is unmanifest okay avyakta means that which is unmanifest which has not separated itself you know anything which comes into being has separated itself from that unmanifest state so it has not even separated itself it has not become an individual entity it has not manifested so avyakta is unmanifested asakta asakta means attached attached is the word for asakta or desiring you know desiring something very much liking something very much all of them is asakta when you have an attraction for something asakta okay asakta it's a adjective okay in this way it's used avyakta asakta means an attachment or liking for the unmanifest chetasam chetasam comes from the word chit that means to be aware so in this case you can say intelligence of mind so our intelligence of mind is attached attracted by the unmanifest so for those whose intelligence of mind is attracted by the unmanifested the difficulty is a little more okay then krishna goes on to explain further avyakta again avyakta and avyakta are meaning the same but one is a masculine word one is a feminine word because of uh, gathi it's a, it is a avyakta here is also an adjective but it is a masculine adjective and from a gender perspective of the word itself in sanskrit words can take different gender uh, okay so gatihi so avyakta means unmanifested he indeed certainly gatihi the word gatihi means multiple things the path the journey and the destination okay all that is denoted by the word gati so that where one goes the going you can say gati he means you can also uh, take the translation as going okay the going towards the avyakta manifested okay while going dukham dukham i have used the word sorrow many of the translators use the word difficulty also and i felt uh, dukham is sorrow is a bit more appropriate uh, so i have only used that but you can say um, difficult also i have just put the word difficult so that you all but everyone generally understand dukham as something which which is sorrow they have a bihi 
is the next word. Dehavat bihi is the next word. It um, so it is a <clears throat> plural third form of the simple noun called dehavat. Dehavat. Dehavat means one who deha means all of us know its body. Dehavat bihi means it's a third third form of that noun in the plural sense. Okay. So what it means is the third form always is by, with, through that kind of a meaning in English. Okay. So by those who have body consciousness, body identification. Those who identify with the body, they have a bihi. I mean they are full filled with body. Okay. That means their mind is filled with their own separate existence as a body. That means they have body identification. Avapyate is an expert, it's a verb. Okay. It's obtained. It's a passive word. Avapya means the gatihi, the destination of the path. Okay, which just travel by those with body consciousness will be sorrow. So that means they will find sorrow as part of that journey. Anyone who is attached to the body, filled with body consciousness, will find the path to the unmanifested. Unmanifested is the formless form. Very difficult, comparatively more difficult. Because they will find it is giving them sorrow, giving them trouble. Okay, that's the meaning of this word. Um, I, we will read Swami's discourses later, so I don't want to dwell on the uh, commentary of sort. I've sort of tried to summarize the words. I think there was a request to summarize. Each way. So I will put a small summary based on whatever we have discussed. I am sure you will find many summaries in many books which are available. There's galore of books. Uh, but I will just try to summarize what we discussed so far. I hope it's of some use. The path of those I think should put a comma whose mind is attached to the unmanifested is greatly painful. It can be painful. Okay, because klesha. Those endowed with body identification will experience sorrow. So why it is difficult is those with body attachment will find that difficult, find the path filled with sorrow a bit. Okay, so that's what Krishna says. We'll go to the next uh, verse. If <clears throat> I hope uh, at the end of the uh, class, you know, everything's sort of fruits in place because Swami nicely puts everything into perspective. Yetu Sarvani Karmani Mai Sanyasya Matparaha Yetu Sarvani Karmani Mai Sanyasya Matparaha Ananye Naiva Yogena Mam Dhyayanta Upasate Ananye naiva yogena maam dhyayanta upasate. Ananye naiva yogena maam dhyayanta upasate. Just to point out some word letters which could be a bit uh, pay, uh, to which you may have to pay attention. The first line actually is rather simple so it should not have 
it, you should not have any difficulty in, in chanting it. Uh, there are no aspirated consonants. The second line, Ananyaneva Yoga and Maam, this the is the fourth letter in the third verga, so it has to be aspirated with a little more exertion. Dhyayanta. Okay, Ananyaneva Yoga and Maam, Dhyayanta Upaste. So that's only one letter, half letter, I would say. This is aspirated. We we'll look at the word split. There are not too many sandhis in this verse. Ye tu sarvani karmani mai sanyasya matara. There is not a single sandhi due to which some transformation takes place. The next line is uh, the first word is has sandhi. Ananyenaiva. Is actually Ananyena Eva. Ananyena and Eva. Na Eva becomes Naiva because of Santhi or joining together. Okay. Ananyena Eva becomes Ananyenaiva. The next one is Yogena, Maam. Dhyayantaha is the original word, that, but the Visarga gets dropped because of Santhi, because it is followed by. A vowel who the visarga is dropped. But there's a word in its original form is dhyayantaha upasate. It becomes dhyayanta upasate. Dhyayanta upasate. Visarga is dropped because of santi. We will look at the word to word meaning. Ye. Ye means who. Ye means whoever. Or whoever. Tu means but. It's, you know, if it's to continue a sentence, you know, you say but, uh, so, you know, things like that. So tu is used in that sense. Tu, but. Sarvani. So, you know, he's telling already difficult. It's beset with a lot of difficulties. Krishna is giving the solution also. He's saying it is a little more difficult. So, but those Sarvani. Sarvani is the plural of the word Sarvam. Sarvam is singular. Sarvani is the plural. That means all. Sarvani. Karmani. So, karmam is the singular words. Karmani is the plural. Actions. Karmani. So, all actions. Sarvani, karmani. Mai. Mai is the third noun form of the word. See, word aham. Aham means I. Mai means, sorry, seventh noun form. In me. On me. Upon me, all that is the seventh form of the noun. Okay. It's called seventh vibhakti. Okay. Saptami vibhakti or seventh vibhakti or seventh noun form. Mayi means in me. In me. Krishna is telling in me. Sanyasya. Sanyasya. Samnyasya. So there's through two ends and then because of sandhi, some extra incomes. Sanyasya. Okay. <clears throat> nyasa. I think many of you may, you know, puja and all, they will say, what's your nyasa? You know, they will say, uh, different deities are placed on different parts of the body. That's called nyasa. Nyasa means to place something. Put something down. Okay. That's nyasa. Nyasa, original word is Nyasa. San Nyasa means, San means in a very nice way, perfectly. Okay, with devotion. All that is San Nyasa. The word San Nyasa itself comes from that word. Okay, San Nyasa means people who have placed everything, given up everything. When we give up everything, that means we have offered everything to 
the Lord. Sannyasa means actually placing everything, all your cares, all what you possess, everything is placed in God. Sannyasya means it's an action which precedes another action. So that means having placed, having entrusted, having dedicated. What? Sarvani Karmani. So where are we dedicating, where are we placing? Krishna is saying, Mayi in me. Place all your actions, interest all your actions in me. Give, place everything in me. Okay, Mayi Sanyasya, having done that, Matparaha. Matparaha means, Mat means me again. Paraha means, para means the supreme. Okay, in uh, prior in uh, priority that is the highest. Keeping God as the highest priority. Krishna is saying, keep me as your highest priority. Place all your actions in me, and whoever whoever places all actions in me, consider me as the supreme priority. Mat paraha. Ananyena. Okay. Ananyena. Ananya, this, the main word is Anya. Anya means other, an outside thing. Okay. Other is Anya, a foreign subject, foreign object. Anya. Ananya means no foreign object. That means nothing, no other thing which is other, no other. Ananyena. Again, third uh, noun form that is Ananya. The first noun form means Ananyena means the third noun form which means by. Okay. So Ananyena means by none other. By none other. Eva is the next word. Certainly, or oh, indeed, or it also can mean alone. Without that only, okay. So without no other, only yogena. Yogena is again the third noun form of the word yoga, which means by yoga. So one who has practices yoga, which is ananya, without no other distraction. So only in one thing you are attached. Yoga also means to be attached. Yuj, the word comes from the word yuj. That means to yoke the mind, to connect. So you're tying yourself to something. That is yoga. So without any other attraction, you tie yourself. Okay, mom in me. Okay, in me. Dhyayantaha means those who meditate. Those who meditate as a Dhyayantaha. Okay. Those who meditate. Dhyayan, Dhyayantaha. Actually, it's plural meditators, I would say. But I have put ye, but ye means those, this also plural, okay. If you just for the sake of it, when I say plural. So, so all those who, who have taken place all their actions in me and who consider me as supreme goal, okay, without no other attraction, join with me in me and meditate. Upasate means worship. Okay. Again, it's worship. worship. Sorry. Upasate is actually plural. Okay. Worship. Meditates those who worship. So it's only half the sentence in this verse. Okay. So we look at the next verse.
तेषामहं समुद्धर्थ मृत्यु संसार सागरात् तेषामहं समुद्धर्थ मृत्यु संसार सागरात् तेषामहं समुद्धर्थ मृत्यु संसार सागरात् भवामि नचिरात् पार्थ मय्यावेशित चेतसाम भवामि नचिरात् पार्थ मय्यावेशित चेतसाम भवामि नचिरात् पार्थ मय्यावेशित चेतसाम लेट्स जस्ट पे अटेंशन टू एनी ऑफ द डिफिकल्ट लेटर्स वेयर यू हैव टू पे अटेंशन टू तेषाम द शा इज विद द टंग टिप ऑफ द टंग पॉइंटेड अप ओके तेषाम अहम समुद्धर्थ here is the th there are two thas coming the first one is simple th the second one is an aspirated one the fourth letter in the third word th okay samudharta mrityu samsara sagarat no aspirated consonants bhavami the first word is bh the bh is the fourth letter in the third word so it has to be aspirated with some exertion bhavami nachira partha tha is the second letter in the tha varga so it has to be aspirated tha partha maya veshita chetasa no difficult consonants we look at the sandhi split okay split of the joint tesham aham tesham and aham together becomes tesham aham okay um plus a becomes ma that's how you get tesham aham tesham aham becomes tesham aham samuddhartha no change the next is three words put together but there are no changes mrityu samsara sagarat uh, no changes due to sandhi here mrityu samsara sagarat bhavami no change nachirat they put together but there are no change na chirat partha this uttan pa they have just put together but no change okay it's just written slightly differently na chirat partha okay mai aveshita it's chetasam here there's a slight change because of sandhi ajot mai aveshita becomes mai aveshita so e plus a becomes e and ya mai ya okay mai ya aveshita chetasam there is uh, put together no change but join together without any change aveshita chetasam so mai aveshita chetasam is mai aveshita chetasam uh, we will look at the word to word meaning tesham we have already looked at the tesham of their of those all those okay it's a plural sixth noun form of the word sah okay of all theirs okay that which belongs to all tesham aham aham means i aham it means i just a side note in the word aham in the sanskrit alphabet a is the first letter a is the first letter 
her is the last letter. The first letters of the vowels is a. The last letter in the consonants is ha. So with the word aham, between that it contains all the letters. Aham actually contains all the letters. It refers to all the letters. So that is the let that is a word which means I. In uh, when Krishna uses the word aham, he's talking about the I principle, the big I principle. The Swami sometimes in many discourses has said, Aham is the name of God. Why it's the name of God? Because everyone refers to them as Aham. We say I am, I am. So everyone actually, whether they realize it or not, they are referring to that I principle, which is God in them. That's why everyone uses. Even animals use it, Swami says. So when you refer to the real you, that is nothing but God. So the Raham actually stands for God. Okay. So Aham, I, when Krishna says I, he is referring to the Paramatma. He is not identifying with his own body also. Okay. Aham, Samudharta. Samudharta. So the main word is Uddhara. Uddhara means someone who lifts somebody up. Uddhara means to lift, uplift. Ud means up. So Uddhara means uplift. Samuddhara, sam Uddhara, sam means in a very nice way, in a divine way, in a good way. Sam Uddhara or completely, also if sam can mean. Completely uplift. Uddhartha, the person who uplifts. The person who uplifts is called Uddhartha. Samuddhartha means, I am the great good uplifter for those. Of those people, I am the uplifter. Krishna says, Tesham Aham Samuddhartha. From where is he uplifting? He is saying, Mrityu. Mrityu means death. Mrityu, death. Samsara. Samsara is, you know, the cycle of existence, birth and death, birth, that which completely revolves. Okay, that which continuously is, revolves is called samsara, samsara. So that is this birth and death, boy, being born and being die, dying. So from the death, and the cycle of birth and death, Smritya Samsara, Sagarat. Sagarat is the fifth noun form, a fifth vibhakti of the word Sagara, which means from. From the ocean, what ocean? Mritya Samsara, the ocean of death and the cycle of birth and death. From that, Samudharta, I am the uplifter. Okay, Krishna says, Bhavami. The word Bhavami means I remain. I remain. It's a I aham Bhavami. I am. I remain. I exist. Some people use the word become, so I put that also. So, I, so God does not become, he always is. But the word can be sometimes meaning becoming. The Lord is always is. Okay. Aham Bhavami, I am, I remain the uplifter, the good uplifter of all those from the ocean of death. And the cycle of birth and death, samsara sagra. Na means not. Chirat. The word chira means long time. Chira means long. I think we all of you are very familiar with the word chiranjivi. 
సీరియల్స్ హనుమాన్ ఇస్ చిరంజీవి అగస్త్య ఇస్ చిరంజీవి పరశురామ ఇస్ చిరంజీవి చిరంజీవి జనరల్ పీపుల్ విల్ సీ దట్ పర్సన్ డజన్ డై ఎవ్రీథింగ్ విచ్ ఇస్ బోర్న్ ఇన్ దిస్ వరల్డ్ డైస్ బట్ చిరంజీవి మీన్స్ హూ లివ్ ఫర్ లాంగ్ టైమ్ చిర ఇస్ లాంగ్ చిర ఇస్ లాంగ్ టైమ్ జీవి మీన్స్ హూ లివ్స్ చిరంజీవి మీన్స్ వన్ హూ లివ్స్ ఫర్ అ లాంగ్ టైమ్ వీ డో నో హౌ లాంగ్ బట్ లాంగ్ దాన్ ద కామన్ పర్సన్ but here na chirat chirat here is actually i have put four long it's very difficult to translate it but it's a fifth form of the noun chira which basically means from but when you translate it in english it doesn't make sense in sanskrit it makes all sense na chirat means not long not for long that means quickly na chirat has to be took, taken together he will not delay the lord will not delay the upliftment nachirat you know i don't wait you don't have to wait with quickly i will lift you up i i remain an uplifter who quickly uplifts people okay partha partha is the sambodhana vibhakti you are addressing krishna is addressing arjuna as partha partha i have not put here the son of prita maybe i should write it here so that uh, that's the way the word uh, let's look for the it's okay i'll prita kunti her name is actually prita kunti's name is prita the son of prita is partha so krishna is ad- addressing arjuna as partha means son of prita swami also says partha means son of prithvi also anyone who is child of this earth is also partha he says we are all also parthas we are all born on this earth okay earthly children so partha krishna is addressing partha then he says mayi is the word which we have already looked at the seventh noun form of the word aham which means in me in me okay aveshita is the next word aveshita means entering into something pravesham i think may all of you know because it's used in many languages entering something aveshita means coming back and entering coming back is a so come back and enter into me aveshita chetasam chetasam we have already looked at uh, it's a six noun form a plural noun form of chetas means one whose mind who have certain intelligence so all those whose intelligence have entered me all those whose minds have entered me so you can see this mayi aveshita is using again and again the lord wants us to place everything in him and he wants us to enter he's like the train in which we take everything and put on the inside the train and we also get into the train such people are uplifted by krishna without delay so i have a short summary of this words i'll just uh, try to put it together you can get other uh, summaries from places but i will just try to summarize what i have spoken o arjuna o partha i uplift from the ocean of existence the flux of birth and death without delay na chirat all those whose all those tesham okay whose mind has entered me mai aveshita chetasam who worship me i'm going to the previous verse okay that's verse 6 upasate dhyayanta who worship me meditating 
without being distracted by ananyena eva without no other distraction having placed all action sarva karmani mai sanyasya having placed all actions on me considering me as a supreme called matara so krishna is giving this assurance that all those who dedicate all actions and leave everything in me who have entered whose mind has entered me and who continuously meditate on me consider me as the supreme goal the highest priority i uplift them from the cycle of birth and death without delay so this is an assurance krishna is there so he starts out saying this path is difficult and then he gives how you can overcome this difficulty in these two verses and giving the assurance that i will uplift you don't have to even wait for too long now we let's read a few discourse excerpts of swami just a couple and we can discuss if any questions it's from the gita vahini actually um it's the last paragraph in the chapter 12 20 uh, swami in this some of the words of krishna swami has put through arjuna in this gita vahini but we will read at this arjuna said krishna the contemplation of the formless characteristicless nirguna nirakara is very difficult adhikataraha klesha is it not for those with deha bhranti identification of the self with the body deha vadhihi that's a word those with deha bhranti or identification of the self with the body the worship of the formful aspect which is within the reach of the ordinary man can this yield purity of mind purity of the inner instruments of consciousness please enlighten me that's why swami is ending chapter 20 in the gita vahini then swami goes on to give the answer in chapter 21 arjuna people think that the worship of god with form and attributes is quite enough this discipline will be of only some help it will guide the person along the road only for a little while for the lord will not condescend to grant liberation for just this he who aims at liberation must first give up attachment to the body without that the atmic stage cannot be attained identification with the body is the expression of ignorance the atma must be recognized as distinct from the objective world prakriti the craving for objective pleasure based on the unreal value attached to the world has to be removed by meditation dhyayanta and penance tapas when that craving is lost the individual becomes like the dry nut inside the coconut shell which becomes loose and unattached both to the shell and the fiber outside it it does not germinate or sprout again it will remain forever without being spoiled the individual has no more birth and consequent death that is to say the individual will be liberated become like that dry nut inside the shell becoming like that dry nut inside the shell is the stage called liberation while alive jeevan mukti the contemplation of the godhead as above and beyond all attributes 
is necessary for becoming liberated while alive. If that is difficult and beyond your capacity, you can do another thing. Dedicate to me all worship, all adoration, all Vedic ritual and other vows and vigils with all the fruits that may accrue. Take me as the ultimate goal, Matpara, as the final aim which transforms all acts into worship. Fix your mind on me, meditate on me. I shall then shower my grace and take you across the ocean of constant change of samsara. I shall favor you with the goal you seek. Arjuna, it is not an easy task to fix your mind steadily on me. Not everyone can succeed in this. However long the practice, it is hard to keep the mind on me without deflecting it toward other things or ideas. So Swami has very nicely summarized the lessons from all these verses. When Arjuna asked the question, uh, so I will stop here. Yes, Auntie. Can I guess, Auntie? One minute. Let me unmute. Okay. You can hear me. Okay. Yes, Auntie. Yes. Um, Arjuna is only referred to as Partha. You say Partha means son of Kundi. But why aren't the other four referred that way? Is there any special reason? No, I think Krishna would have addressed them also as Partha. It but it's just uh, just in this uh, context when Krish Swami says Arjuna, Krishna purposely addresses because he's not only addressing Arjuna, he's addressing everyone who is reading the Gita. Uh, son of the earth, is it? Yeah. So he's addressing everyone. That's uh, why he has used the word. Uh, he has Arjuna as a representative of everyone. Every. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So as you can see, Swami, when Arjuna asks the question, is this better or is that better? We all have, we always ask the Lord, you know, God, should I worship the form or without the form? Uh, we want something best. Krishna is dodging that question because we should not be looking at it. He is, so as Swami has explained, both are equally important. Both are equally important, but we have to, it may be easy for us to cultivate it, cultivate the formful, but we should not neglect the formless. And he says formless worship is not imagining that there is no form, but we should lose our own identification with the body. If, if we do not identify, uh, uh, give up the identification with the body, that path is very difficult. It, you can find it painful. Because it's very difficult to sacrifice the world. Uh, even to surrender everything to the world, God, or God also is a problem. Because we want to hold on to things. Then when because we hold on to Because things, we are ordinary people, no? <laughs> yes. But he wants us to strive to be a little better. More, I think. Thank uh, you. Yes. Yes, auntie. Saku, auntie. Sorry, Ram, I don't know. I know about the uh... <clears throat> Nilguna and Saguna worship. This uh, con uh, offering all your actions, thoughts, and words to the Lord and having Him as the main concentration of your life and your goal. Uh, are, which uh, category it goes into? <clears throat> Without the form, we just offer uh, to the Lord or with the form, uh, Lord, you offered your all your actions and words and deeds. Is it to the Nirguna or Saguna or? See, auntie, how... from, from what I understand so far, my understanding is Swami and Krishna are both not distinguishing these as two separate things. It's all different aspects of the same devotion. The devotion may see the person as with form, uh, 
um, but the devotion can continue when there is no form also. Um, and Swami gives nice examples. I don't know in the previous one we in the previous. Swami says, you know, for example, even if somebody is there in our life, we love them in person. But even the person is no more with us also, we continue to think of them. Their form is not there, but the memory is alive. And we may still think of them with gratitude. So both together is the total love. So uh, devotion has both the components. Thank you. It has a component of physical as well as mental. Anything which we love, if even if we give something to somebody whom we love, are we giving it to the body of the person? Are we giving it to the person? Uh, it's all in our state of mind. So uh, God does not even distinguish that. He's just saying, you just think of me, meditate on me, offer everything. It is a form full as well as formless. You yeah, offer it to you. both. Offer it it to makes both. clear. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's like you know when you offer prasadam, are we offering to the photograph no. or to the Swami, which is represented by the photograph? So it's the same thing. Uh, we offer it to both. We offer it physically to the one who is there in the photo, maybe. But we are also offering to, at the same time to that uh, Lord who is unmanifest there. Who is beyond that photograph or the phone? Sorry. The Baba has said it. Don't think I am it, just a photo. Exactly. exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Brother Vimalaisen, you had raised your hand. Uh, Sorry, uh, I uh, no, since uh, no, I, I just want a clarification that Swami has in public discourse has said, uh, no, Swami. Uh, said so many, uh, you know, uh, uh, seemingly contradictory things, but uh, uh, but uh, no, what I am referring is, he has said, temple worship is kindergarten, so things like that. But oh, in this excerpt, so as you said, uh, uh, I think that's what uh, so both are, both are important, but uh, the no, say for ex extreme example, so Ramana Maharishi was people like that. We are we are not even towards that. So for but at the same time, what I'm trying to ask is just in this background, they a person with normal body consciousness, they will do the form, form worship or with form. Uh, going to temple or or even at home uh, having an idol, a murti and worship and things like that. So it, on the other extreme, if uh, like Ramana Maharishi, they are totally without body consciousness, uh, it's entirely a difference. So is there a stage in between? That's what I'm asking. Say, uh, if, if, uh, if less body, body consciousness, but still... Uh, we have it, but uh, then is there a the worship also? Is there in between what I'm trying to say? You you don't feel like going to temple and worship. You're used to that, but now you don't have that. Uh, but uh, more more inclined towards uh, uh, mental worship or meditation or uh, or or even if. You have, uh, we like Swami's home, but we prefer to uh, meditate him inwardly, things like that. So I hope you understand my question. No, is understand. is it understand. a valid, valid, uh, this thing? That's what I'm asking. I understand very much, brother. See, as Krishna has explained nicely, as long as we have the body consciousness, we have to deal with the body. Um, the thing is, even if you take people like Ramana Maharshi, if you said Ramana Maharshi, Ramana Maharshi, even as a person, he, for example, he was eating every day. So when he eats, is he offering that food to God or to the body? It's a question we can ask. You know, just let's leave it the temple out. The body is actually fed. But he does, he may not think that only the body is being fed. 
the atman is also being fed right right so as long as we have body we have to form worship is part of it uh, see even if you take swami if swami is thought everyone is god he does not even come and give darshan he will say you see me everywhere swami came and gave darshan as long as the body was around so the thing is krishna answers this question he is saying even though i don't have to engage in action i engage in action so a person who thinks that they are beyond uh, temple worship they still have to perform when temple worship why because they set an example for others if even for that sake because there, there is a, a physical thing uh, is also needed to keep the physical world alive mm-hmm. so it is a duty in dharma vaini swami has very nicely covered this well swami has dedicated two chapters for temple worship as long as we are alive with the body mm-hmm. following some form of dharma is essential mm-hmm. uh, or demonstrating even though uh, ramana was not attached he would ask people to go and worship uh, the arunachala temple right he encourage them mm-hmm. Yeah. he himself used to will go on a parikrama okay going yeah. around the mountain so the thing is they also demonstrated but they demonstrated them not to be only dependent on the physical but also to raise themselves to experience uh, that which is beyond them so swami has given importance to both equally demonstrated with in practice right okay in practice and if anyone felt that they are above then their job is to teach others to to do both to yeah. do the to the physical as well as but it is uh, sometimes we tend to our own laziness if we have reached that stage of not right. wanting to go to temple and just meditating we won't even eat why do we have to maintain the body we are not the body the body will drop off the even for the desire to eat happen will stop so uh, that i hope that answers your question yeah i think so there is in between there are so many uh, in, in, in between is trechang sorga right yeah. <laughs> okay. okay it is not neither sorga nor world yeah right uh, that's okay. a, thank you yeah so there is no in between it's fixed Uh, swami says you know don't deflect towards other things other ideas there's only one uh, it means uh, it, it's just the same concept even jesus says i am the way but people think you know if you uh, worship any other form you are doomed sanatana dharma doesn't say krishna also ex- says the exact same thing but there's a difference he is saying that i principle that i principle is the way aham Uh, but you can worship that aham through any form any name that is a distinct uh, differentiation between the same idea communicated right. through sanatan dharma and understood uh, by many followers of that same okay. principle was uh, espoused by lord jesus also but it may not have been interpreted and practiced by people in that same spirit Um, okay thank you sairam bhai yes sister aruna but uh, sairam is in regards to the formulas again i'm just uh, wondering over it mm-hmm. i just wanted to understand the thing you know? now here you have mentioned about one person is not there you are thinking over it like uh, don't you think that you are meditating on the form or thinking about the form in the formulas is no, no attribute no things it's beyond you're, that you're, you're meditating on the essence you're meditating on the essence sister yeah actually i'm meditating on the essence but for the mind to be able to focus even in a mental form it mental state it needs a form see even if you say i'm just imagining a light 
you you are you are seeing some form uh, you if you if you say i am meditating on shiva and you are imagining shivalingam that's also a form okay the mind always needs a name and form to attach itself the mind is incapable of thinking of anything other than a name and a form as long as the mind exists a name and form which it imagines is needed but in that imagination actually you are experiencing the essence the yes, essence okay okay that's okay. me understand thank you yes auntie sakur yeah i have a question i need clarity of that uh, ramana maharishi when the uh, aspirants go there he hardly speaks to them he looks into their eyes and these aspirants also never asked a question but they got answered or answers for all the doubts they had in is it the mind uh, uh, wave or thought wave mind wave is that the way that communication was done or divine energy was passed ramana maharshi did not try to make anyone enlightened he was just himself is my understanding take a pun i couldn't hear you ramana maharshi was just himself the only one who went whatever their state of mind they took away whatever they were capable of just the way swami walks around for darshan how many people does he speak to but whoever goes there with whatever vessel which they have taken depending on the size and ability they can take home whatever they want mm. same thing with with march so you can take it at the mental level you can take it at the physical level you can take it at the spiritual level it all depends the vessel which we have taken to fill fill mm. so depending on the ability and the capability and the stage of development of the devotee or the follower they benefit mm-hmm. it's the same thing in any even in a temple if you go to a temple the vigraha is just sitting is it communicating it doesn't have to it is full of communication it's just like the sun now when we go out in the sun we can our skin can get burnt our uh, uh, oxygen can be energized our body heat can go up the the benefit is at all levels depending on our uh, ability to absorb that is my understanding thank you inside thank you very much sir sairam uh, and i just told the uh, pointing out for sister aruna's question that uh, no swami used to say uh, you are three in one so i think you no know, when Uh, what you think you are is body others think you are the mind so after one's uh, demise or oh, uh, things like that they, even if they love they i think they they think of their mind body rather than the physical body uh, I, i just thought yeah yes the mind body can only see the other mind body <laughs> thank you right. thank you So I think it's about ten seventeen. If there are no questions, we'll close. I hope the pace at which I am going is okay. Uh, you know, I'm t- trying to keep it as precise or concise as possible. Uh, I hope it fits okay. If it's if you need anything to improve, at the cassette that is what you are giving us. We are happy. Sorry. Right. Yes, Kalyani, you have a question. Yes, I have, Uncle. So, um, samsara. D- does that come from the word sara or? Sr. The the root dhatu is sr. Okay. Okay. From sr, sara comes. Sr actually is that which rotates. Sara is you rotate something or squeeze something, you get sara, which is essence. Oh. Okay. okay. Everything. So it's all coming from the root word dhatu sr. It is to rotate, to squeeze, or whatever you want to call it. And um, so, sara is that. Some sara is a good essence, or oh, you know, well. So it's a it's circular motion. 
the world actually the cycle is actually squeezing the atman out so that we can experience it mm. <laughs> okay it is actually squeezing us uh, is a centrifugal or centripetal so it's ultimately samsara is good if mm. you stay long enough it will beat you up in such a way and put pull the essence out of it i hope that answers Is it when it says mrityu samsara sagara? It, is it like mrityu sagara and then samsara sagara both like that? Or I think Swami has equ- equated both because okay. samsara sagara, as long as it is there, there is death. Mm-hmm. Um, when you are lifted, there is no mrityu. You have reached the amrita state. Okay. So, mrityu is the certainty in samsara. Everything which you see you will die. will not last the certainty in samsara is death so you you take one out then one becomes amrita mm. eternal essence so. and is, uh, yeah. yeah and the, in the first loka um you said the avyakta the second one was feminine because gati he is feminine yes yes it's it's a adjective which takes the form of the form ending form of the noun which it tries to describe so it's saying the gati itself like the path itself is unmanifest or um or is the path to the unmanifest pa- path the journey of the unmanifested so we 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 are we are engaging in an unmanifest journey also is <laughs> our atman is that journey is unmanifest journey. Mm-hmm. which is not seen by us uh so there is a that's a parallel journey which is happening even in the physical world mm-hmm. we have a physical journey there's a mental journey and there is a spiritual level of journey also so there is an unmanifested journey which we cannot perceive that we also you can take or you can take the journey to the unmanifest so because it's poetry uh you are you are not limited by your interpretation and imagination and the higher level of meaning which we want to get out of it so in these three shlokas like it seems like krishna is saying that the you know the unmanifest path is very painful and full of sorrow and so instead um just dedicate all your actions to me yes without any other thought yeah um but in this in the this the the um, excerpts from swami it, swami is saying that even though it's difficult you still have to at some point give up the body conscious yes okay otherwise the journey is not complete okay yeah that's it you know you may not find this kind of explanation and interpretation anywhere you know swami is the only one who can sort of clarify and put everything in perspective. Mm. Very nice. I hope you find it you all find it useful. Thank you. Sayur. Okay, Sayur everyone, we'll close the session with uh, prayers and we'll meet again next week. Sayur. Oh Samasta loka sukhino bhavantu समस्त लोकाखिनो समस्त लोकाखिनो शांति 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 साइर